Coming up next on Arizona Horizons Journalists Roundtable, we look back on the past year and predict what's to come in 2015. It's the Journalists Roundtable Year End Show next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon's year-end Journalists Roundtable. I'm Ted Simons. This is our annual prediction show where we look ahead with conviction even as we glance behind in confusion. And joining me to preview 2015 are Steve Goldstein of KJZZ Radio, Howard Fisher of Capital Media Services, and Doug McCackern of the Arizona Republic. Now, before our panel predicts what will happen in 2015, let's see how well they did with their 2014 prognostications. Producer Steve Clawson has the recap. Heading into 2014, most predictions centered on the upcoming election, starting with the governor's race. Who will be the Republican nominee for governor? I believe Scott Smith will. I'm going to say Ken Bennett only because he's sort of a safe bet for the Republicans. I'm going to say Doug Ducey. Doug Ducey easily defeated his five Republican challengers in the primary and moved on to face Democrat Fred Duval in November. Who wins the general election? Well, Ted, Doug Ducey's going to win the general election based on registration advantage entirely. Whoever the Republican is, if it's going to be uh, Bennett and the Republican, it's, it's that way. If Smith is a nominee, uh, that, uh, that he'll, he'll win the general election, so I'm going to stick with that. Ducey defeated Duval to become Arizona's next governor. Next up, would Attorney General Tom Horn survive a Republican primary challenge? I think uh, he'll win their primary. I think the Brnovich could pull it out. So I'm going to say Burnovich will win that, yeah. Mark Burnovich defeated Tom Horn in the August primary and faced Felicia Rodolini in the general election. I will say Felicia Rodolini will win. She will not get her matchup with Horn. I think she'll beat Burnovich. I think that Felicia's got some good street cred, and I think she could pull it out. I, I think she's as tough a campaigner as Horn, or for that matter, any other Republican that might win, win, that, win the primary there. And I, so I think that she's uh, got a good chance at winning it. Bernovich defeated Rodolini to win the attorney general's race. From there, the panel predicted the secretary of state's race. I think that uh, Michelle Reagan might have a chance. I'm going to say Michelle if I, if I had to. I'm going to go with Justin Pierce. Michelle Reagan won the Republican primary and defeated Democrat Terry Goddard in the general election. After the statewide races, our panel turned their attention to the Arizona legislature. Republican Democratic breakdown of the Arizona House and Senate. I think the House will end up 35-25 uh, and the Senate will end up 17-13 and needless to say, both remain in Republican control. Give us some numbers, Steve. I see, yes, one uh, seat gained by the Democrats in the House, so 35-25, and then I see uh, one seat gained by the Republicans in the Senate to make that 18-12. to 12. I think that the Republicans will probably pick up a seat in both houses. I think you'll see 38 Republicans in the House and what is it, number 18 in the Senate. The new Arizona legislature has a 36-24 Republican advantage in the House and a 17-13 GOP majority in the Senate. After Arizona, the panel looked at what would happen with the Washington delegation. Will any congressional incumbent lose their seat? I think Ann Kirkpatrick may be history at this point. Martha McSally in Southern Arizona, in her, what is it, I think third time, will, will she's been increasingly better as a candidate every time she's run. I think she may pull it off this time. I'm going to say Kirkpatrick's the only one who loses. And I think, actually, I think she has a pretty good chance of losing to Andy Tobin. And Kirkpatrick defeated Andy Tobin, while Ron Barber lost a close race to Martha McSally. But the question was, which party would be in charge after November? Democrats, will they win back the U.S. House of Representatives? I don't see any chance of that happening. No, I, I don't see any way they can do it. They could end up losing three, four seats at least. Yeah, I, I think they're going to lose a few seats. So they're not going to win back control. Republicans picked up 13 seats in November to give the GOP its largest margin in the U.S. House since 1929. The bigger question in 2014 was whether Republicans could flip the Senate. Will the Republicans win control of the United States Senate? I predict they come up two seats short. I'm with Doug. I, I don't think there are enough good races out there that, you know, for them to take over. I, I, I don't, I think a no. Republicans won nine seats to take control of the Senate. Even though the focus in 2014 was on the midterm election, it didn't stop people from speculating about the 2016 presidential race. Any big name candidate to announce 
Four presidents yes. in 2016. I'm going to say one big name. It's a person who hasn't been in office but is out front of the immigration issue with Clint Bullock of the Goldwater Institute. I'm going to say Jeb Bush. I think that they all have to jump in if you really want to start raising money. I don't think that anybody in this, uh, until the calendar year uh, starts, it, it, they're going to make an official announcement. From politics, the panel turned to sports. Will the Diamondbacks win the National League West? Ted? As big a fan as I am, mm -hmm. I love Kirk Gibson. I, I just, I, I just think the, the the forces of evil in in Los Angeles are just too mm -hmm. powerful right now. They're you know they're Mordor of the National League, uh, <laughs> but I think they'll make the playoffs. I don't, I don't think they win National League West. I'm not even sure they get the playoffs, quite frankly. What do you think, Steve? I say no. In fact, I think they may have to lease back the pool to the Dodgers when the Dodgers coach yeah. again in their field. The Diamondbacks finished with the worst record of the major leagues, 30 games behind the L.A. Dodgers. Next up, how would the Phoenix Suns fare? Will uh -oh. the Suns make the playoffs? Okay, now I've been a Suns fan since I was seven years old, so this is very difficult for me. Because at the beginning of the season, I thought they were going to be terrible. They're not terrible at this point. I'm going to say no. But yeah, they'd make the playoffs, but not much further. I'm just going to say no. The Suns finished with a record of 48-34 and 34 and failed to make the playoffs. From the NBA, the panel predicted the NCAA. Does the U of A make the Final Four? I think they will. <laughs> I think this may be the year that they, they do it. Definitely Sweet 16. I'll think. say Final Four, why not? The Wildcats failed to make the Final Four, losing the regional final by one point to Wisconsin in overtime. Finally, our panel is always asked for a long shot and a sure thing prediction. My, my sure thing is that despite all of her rantings and ravings about what the Constitution allows, we will not see Jan Brewer's name on the ballot in 2014 for governor. Um, my long shot is that when we're sitting around the table next year, Clarence Carter will not be head of the Department of Economic Security. Now, my sure thing <laughs> is that the legislature will pass and the governor will sign some sort of Clarence Carter to move CPS away from DES. So my other one is that, even though I said the Diamondbacks would not make the playoffs, I still think Kirk Gibson, Kevin Towers survive, manager and general manager, but team president Derek Hall becomes Major League Baseball commissioner. I really do think that uh, Clarence C Carter will be gone uh, sometime uh, before uh, the end of next year. As for a long shot, I think Christine Jones will make, uh, she's not going to become the, the GOP nominee, I don't believe, for governor. But I do think that she's got enough money and she's got enough personality that she'll make a, a, a credible play. I think she may, she may come in second against uh, the ultimate winner. Now it's time to reveal this year's champion. Howie Fisher, after winning the last three years, comes in third with 5.5 points. Doug McCachron is the runner-up with six points. And Steve Goldstein wins with six and a half points. So congratulations, Steve, on your well win. Can we get some immediate comment from you, please? Ted, I want to thank all the little people, mm -hmm. especially Howie. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Well, that's... Uh... And Howie, you finished well, third. Well, how so do you well, feel? Well, how, do you, how does it feel? Well, why do you keep asking us these questions <laughs> year after year, given that when the winners got six and a half points? Well, that, that's true. Maybe I should make them easier? <laughs> yes, you should make them much All easier. All right, good luck on that. Let's, shall we get started for 2015? Yes, yes. Let's get going here. Steve, we'll start with you, Mr. Champion. Uh, will Greg Stanton be reelected mayor? I will say yes. Yes. <laughs> now <laughs> now you're getting cautious because you won? Well, remember, several years ago I picked Wes Gallo to defeat Greg Stanton. So I will stick with Greg Stanton, though, yes. Stanton. I, I think so. I think that the people are generally happy with the way the city is being run, and I don't see a lot of really credible challengers out there. Sal DeCicio, notwithstanding being unavoidable for comment. What do you think, Doug? Is Greg Stanton the uh, once and future mayor? I, you know, we have been critical of Greg from time to time, but, but um, he would say a lot. But, um, <laughs> but I would say that Greg has done a better job of avoiding controversy than most mayors of Phoenix. I think he's excelled at that. And so I, I think the voters will find that no real reason to kick him from office. Will he face any serious opposition? I can't think of any. I, I, I honestly, I've racked my brain about this. I can't really imagine anybody... Well, of stature that could stand up to a sitting mayor and beat him. What do you think, Howie? That, that comes down to a question of, of somebody like like Sal, you know, who, who does have some name ID. I don't know that 
you know, he has stature. I mean, I remember Sal when he was a, a PR guy for a sheriff, you know, so it's, it's hard to imagine him as, as the mayor. But, it, it, you know, Sal is pretty good at sticking his finger up in the air and seeing, well, is this, does this make sense? What do you think? Yeah, I do think Sal's going to get in. I think that we get so many news releases from him that I think he will. <laughs> I think if we're looking at the two people who've been in opposition to Stanton on the council, Jim Waring has the better temperament to be mayor, but he's not going to do it. So I'm, I'll say Sal will run. Will Hillary Clinton announce that she's running for president? Yes. And she will announce it on Arizona Horizon. No, she won't. <laughs> will Hillary Clinton well, announce? I'll tell you, if you can get that, 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 that get, uh, yeah, of course. You know, see, at this point, you've got to be raising the money. You really have to get in there. And I don't see anybody scaring her off, uh, you know, certainly not the, a certain senator from Massachusetts. Yeah, she, she is a, a ver veritable vacuum cleaner for Democratic money. And, and uh, I can't imagine a, a more certainty, a greater certainty than, than that her, Hillary would be running for president. Will any major Democratic challenger go up against her? Well, yes. I, I, I think that um, Elizabeth Warren is going to be uh, drawn into it closer. Uh, you, can, you can tell that, she's, that she loves the limelight, that she's really getting some legs underneath her with, with uh, um, the uh, liberal base. I think she's got, uh, um, she'll move forward. And, and one of the things Elizabeth Warren has working for her is, you know, we just adopted a, a budget that kind of guts some of the banking regulations. This is Elizabeth's issue. There's a good populist issue in here. And I think that, that she'll make a strong challenge. Now, she may end up just being an also-ran, and then we're looking down the road to 2020, but I think she's going to give a strong challenge. You think she's actually going to announce a challenge to Hillary Clinton? I do not. The only major name I think will do it, and this is totally based on ego, is Joe Biden has to run. Even though he knows he's not going to raise enough money, he has to run. He's already won, run three, won, run three more times, three other times. He's going to have to try, because he, he'll think to himself, there's enough controversy around the Clintons, maybe I can pull this out. Howie, will Jeb Bush announce formally and officially that he's running for president? Well. As we saw earlier this month, uh, he's, uh, not, he's dipped uh, his uh, toe, his, uh, his calf, and his knee into the water already. So I don't see how he can back off now. And, and everybody's trying to psych each other out. And so, yeah, he wants to be out there early. What do you think, Doug? I really, uh, when push comes to shove, I, I don't think he will. I, I think he'll find a reason not to. I think that, uh, uh, and I, I'm not sure that it'll be because of the Tea Party opposition, but I think that, the, that, that I don't think he's got the fire in him. And I think he's got a greater sense of irony that he realizes that all these Clinton and Bushes being in the presidential race is just too much. I agree with Doug. I think that the only sort of non extremely conservative person we're going to see run on the Republican side is Chris Christie. It's either going to be Christie or Bush, and I think Christie will muscle Bush out. How many Republicans do you think will run for president? Well, if we're talking, see, here's the problem is, are we talking at Iowa? Uh, you know, how many are in there? I think we, by Iowa, I think we're going to see, or New Hampshire, yeah. you see about six serious candidates in there. And I think, you know, Christie will get in there. I don't see Christie going very far. The guy's temperament, you know, is, and, and his mouth will, will definitely knock him out of it. I think the big fight's going to be on the conservative wing of the party, but I think we're going to see six serious candidates. Give me a number, Steve. I'm going to say more than six, um, because I think you're going to have those candidates, uh, a former congressman sort of thing. You're going to have an, the equivalent to a Michelle Bachman, who's a current member of Congress, who's going to run. I'll say seven. Seven. What do you think, Doug? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of vanity opportunity there. And if we're talking about uh, Iowa at that point in the race, I'll, I'll go eight. Okay, very good. So we got, we got three separate numbers this there. This is like the price is right. Yes, <laughs> uh, now door number two. All right, will there be a serious, and I mean a serious challenger mm -hmm. to John McCain's Senate seat? Announcing a challenge. Announcing, yes. I, I will say no. If we're going to say a serious challenger is someone who is at least as viable as J.D. Hayworth was, then no. <laughs> uh, a serious challenger. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, now that's a damning. That's a loaded question. Yes, I can't figure that out. Uh, serious challenger announcing a campaign. I don't think announcing, but I think there are going to be some folks out there who are testing the water, and figuring out has he outlived his usefulness. And of course, it depends on which John McCain. As we heard John Stewart say, you know, for years we had the old McCain, and all of a sudden, you know, comes the torture report, and hey, I remember this guy. I like this guy. Doug? I think our modern era, a serious candidate is, is really going to be defined by, by who gets all of the independent money backing him, whether he likes it or not, and, or he, she, she likes it or not. Um, and so I, 
I think there will be. I think there's enough antipathy toward the senator that there will be. And so, yeah, I'll, I expect there will be. All right. Um, Governor Ducey, will Governor Ducey veto any bills? I'm just going by the kumbaya that you're seeing now. I'm going to run with that and say no. See, I, I'm, not, I'm not only going to say yes, but I'm going to say that the number is going to be six. Uh, I think that there will be some folks who are trying to, to test the waters. And if, for, for a while, we're going to see you know, him trying to figure out what's going on, and he's going to have to get out of his programming mode. But I, th I think there's going to be you know, four to six bills they'll veto. I think there have to be a couple because he can't completely look like a rubber stamp because too many people anticipate he's going to be that way. And from talking to Andy Biggs recently, kumbaya was the good word for it, but some of us expected slight kumbaya with Governor Brewer, not quite as much as with Ducey, and there was definitely not that case. No, no, that was not the song they were singing. All right, will the legislature introduce an SB 1062 type bill next session? I will once again reference Andy Biggs who said to me, that will not happen this term. Oh, see, I, I think you're wrong on that. There will be a variant on the thing. Because remember, it passed two years ago, and the only reason it was vetoed is that the governor said, don't send me a bill until you get the budget. This year, what with gays being able to marry, you're going to find a lot of folks. you got Kathy Herod, who is in Ducey's kitchen cabinet. Uh, you have folks out there who say that there need to be certain protections. Will it be more carefully worded? I think Steve Yarbrough will craft something, but I think Steve Yarbrough will, come, will, will introduce a bill that is close. Doug? I think there will be, and, and here's why. I, I, I think that in both cases, the, the big celebrated controversy bills that we've seen, 1062 and 1070, both surprised the conservatives that introduced them. They didn't really expect to get that kind of vociferous reaction to it, and it sort of came a little bit after the process. Um, and so uh, I think that they will have social uh, issues that they'll, they'll deal with. I think one of those, yeah, I think one of them will catch fire somewhere and it'll catch them once again unaware. How will the state address that court-mandated $317 million school funding shortfall? You're looking at me, aren't you? I am. I think that, I, I think that the, obviously there will be some sort of accommodation. They're not going to just write a check because they don't have the check. Um, and um, I, I think that there will be uh, time payments of some kind. I, I, I'm guessing that it'll be in the range of maybe $30, 35000000 million. No, see, I, I think the 317 is just to bring reset the base to yeah. where we need. I think that the Supreme Court by this time next year will have said, yeah, it's going to be, you're going to reset the base and you're going to do it. Now, the question of the time payments comes down to this billion dollars. I have a feeling that the judge is not going to give them the full billion, even over five years, that we're going to end up with a much smaller number. And in fact, I might even go out on, on a ledge, maybe this is one of those long shot things that if, if Ducey has any smarts about him, he'll settle, uh, he'll make a deal and say, I'll give you the reset of the base, just make that billion dollars go away. I really like that answer a lot. I don't think that's necessarily <laughs> going to happen, but I think that's a terrific prediction. I'll go with Howie on that. All right. Uh, quickly here, when will the Arizona legislature adjourn? Well, uh, Andy Biggs is saying a pretty short session, right? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say April the 27th. Give me a date, Howie. Uh, I, I think it's going to be closer to, to May 15th because while Andy Biggs says we can do a 65-day budget, uh, Dave Gowan is wanting to do the budget the way it used to be done, from the bottom up, building it, and that means a lot of hearings and a lot of buy-in. Yeah, uh, Biggs told us uh, he expected that they, 65 days would not be impossible. I think that's <laughs> a fan, living in a fantasy world. I, I really think, I'm going to say the first week of May. How many vetoes, uh, Doug, will President Obama issue? Well, now, now we're talking. Um, <laughs> you know, with, with, with a Republican Congress, um, the sky's the limit. Um, just talking major bills, I would say that there'll be five that really stand out. How's that? But, but I think that the number is going to be far more than that because I think they'll churn them out. I, I'll say total vetoes, maybe 30. Well, the one thing, though, that may, uh, that may keep that down is we still have sort of, on some issues, a 60-vote rule, and the, the Republicans don't have 60 to get certain stuff out of the Senate. I think there'll be five or six. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near 30. I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to say around 15. I, th I think what Doug is saying, there are going to be some major things that come up, maybe three major and 15 total. Will Congress make a serious attempt to impeach President Obama? 
Hmm. Serious is an interesting question about that. I will, <laughs> I will say no because I think that'll be too much of an embarrassment. It'll be considered to be too much of a waste of time by enough of the body. Yeah, not only that, you know, he's in his last two years of office. Uh, you know, do you really want to drag this through? I, I don't see it. Yeah, I, I, I see the um, uh, House and Senate leadership exerting more discipline than that. Uh, will the U.S. Supreme Court, what will the U.S. Supreme Court decide regarding Obamacare? I think that is going to be the, I, I, I think that the, uh, the court is going to rule against it. And I know what kind of chaos that will ensue after that. Um, and uh, um, I, I, I think that uh, Obamacare's finances are in trouble. Well, I think the question is if, if the issue that's going to get back to the court is the wording of states with or without their, uh, you know, their own particular setups, uh, I think the court is going to say, look, the intent of the legislation was clearly that everybody gets the subsidy. So I think the court leaves that one alone. As far as the exchange is concerned, yes. I agree with Howie. I think ultimately in, in 2015, I don't see it being overturned. Though. Nothing nothing about overturned. Okay. Um, real quickly, uh, Supreme Court vacancy, we're going to see one in 2015? Uh, Yay or nay? I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg is stronger than people think, so I will say no. I think one, because I think that uh, perhaps some of the folks there want Obama to make the replacement. So I think you know, we, so, we may end up with a Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, you know, leaving. You know, I don't see that either. I, I think he's right. I think that uh, I, you know, Ruth is pumping iron in the, uh, in the gym right now. <laughs> well, all right. Um, uh, real quickly on sports, how far do the Cardinals go in the playoffs? Oh, you, you're, um, God. Uh, I'd be tough. Let me put it this way. I, you're not going to see the Cardinals in the Super Bowl. Sorry. Doug? Honestly, I don't think they're going to win their first playoff game. What do you think, Steve? I think they're going to win one playoff game because I think Stanton will be back and their defense will hold enough so they'll score seven points and win a game. Will the U of A make the final four? Bonus points, hmm. will they win it all? They're definitely not going to win it all, Ted. But I will say yes, final four. I think they'll make the final four. I know we, you know, lost by a point last year. You know, they talk about, you know, close but no cigar. But yeah, I think they've got a strong base there. Um, I don't see them, you know, taking the whole thing home. Come March Madness, it really helps to have a strong backcourt. U of A's got the best backcourt they've had in a long time. I think they'll go make the final four. I think they'll make the final two. I, I think they'll win it all. Yeah. Listen to listen to. He finally says it. All right. Uh, again, we got to move faster. Suns. Do they make the playoffs? No. Nah. As I said in the earlier part of this program, Suns fan for 40 years, they will not make the playoffs. All right. It is time now for our long shot and sure thing predictions. Mr. Champion, you go first. My sure thing is that we're going to see a lot more. Even with the respect for Mark Burnovich, we're going to see a lot more of Bill Montgomery around the Capitol because of his relationship with Doug Ducey. That is my sure thing. My long shots, I have two, Ted. Okay. One is increasing the rivalry between ASU and Grand Canyon. ASU will fire head coach, basketball coach Herb Sendek, and Dan Marley will be the next head coach of ASU. My other long shot is as of developments earlier in the month of December, next U.S. ambassador to Cuba is Jeff Flake. Ooh, oh, the, I the, like the that. boldness of this is amazing. I yeah. like that. Um, I've got sort of my sure shot oh, is we sort of hinted we're not getting out of here in 65 days, no matter what Andy Biggs has been smoking. My semi sure shot is that the recall against Diane Douglas will will fail. Uh, my really long shot is that when the driver's license issue goes back starting next year before the courts all over again on the equal protection, we will actually get a court to say that the equal protection argument that they won the preliminary injunction on has faltered now that they've readjusted it, and Arizona will be able to deny licenses ultimately to, to DACA and Dreamers. Equally bold. Doug, you've got a lot to live up to here. I think I can match that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, well, sure thing, I, I, I really do believe that Elizabeth Warren will uh, form an exploratory committee. I, th I think you can expect that she'll go that far. You can sort of see the hunger in her eyes, uh, <laughs> and it's, it's growing every day. And she's, and she's, getting, uh, she's getting financial backing already. So I think you know, there's a good chance that, that she'll make Hillary's life miserable for the most of next year. I, I think that my long shot is it's a little complex economic thing, but... I think that the stock market, you will see the stock market below where it is at the end of this year. I don't think it's, it's 
you're going to see a, a dive. I'm not predicting a, a crash, but, uh, but it will go down. And I think at, um, on the opposite end, I think the economy will, will grow at a better rate than it did this year. All right. It almost so the, can't, almost can't right. help that. Inverse relationship. Yes. We've got them. Yeah. Gentlemen, good luck, and we'll meet again next year. That is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.